The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning. Learners should be able to recognize how word choices, imagery, and sound devices affect mood, meaning, and theme. Hi, I'm Charlotte. In order to extend our understanding of intention and message, I have decided to take a closer look at South African protest poetry. Poets are often considered to be the conscience of a society. So by learning to understand their work fully, you are empowered to take a look and evaluate other ideas and opinions. Then you can formulate your own ideas and learn to express them well. In South Africa's history, poets and writers like Ethel Fugard, Breiten Breitenbach, Mongani Wale Sorote and Lenri Pieter played a major part through their writing in bringing about change in this country. It is important that you realise that language is a powerful tool in changing people and societies. Protest poetry will show you a style of poetry which deals directly with the emotions of poets. So as we go through the poems, in this lesson, we are going to focus on the intention and message. Here is our first poem, Moon in the Bucket, by Gabriel Okara. Look, look out there in the bucket, the rusty bucket, with water unclean. Look, a luminous plate is floating, the moon, dancing to the gentle night wind. Look all you who shout across the wall with a million hates. Look at the dancing moon. It is peace unsoiled by the murk and dirt of this bucket wall. This poem deals with the hope of all oppressed people that eventually they will be freed from this oppression. Now let's look at how the poet manages to convey this message and how we can form an opinion of his intention. The poet chooses to address the reader directly, but he's also addressing the oppressed people. See how this is almost a command. Importantly, the poem could also be addressed to all people, including the oppressors who shout across the wall. Now look at the style of language the poet uses. It is informal and everyday, without any complicated or difficult language. Why is this? The bucket outside, filled with dirty water, is something everyone can relate to. We've all seen one. And the language works in the same way. The poet doesn't want anyone excluded from his message, so he addresses everyone with a look. And you don't have to be highly educated and literary to deal with his message and the language of his poem. Look at words like rusty, and unclean. Do you see how the idea of the dirty bucket implies a measure of poverty and rural living? These dirty buckets can also refer to bucket toilets. So the poet is addressing all people, but especially poor and oppressed people. But when he repeats this word in the second stanza, he is addressing a very specific group of people. Now he is very specifically talking to the people filled with hate. And who do you think they would be, given that the poem was written during the years of apartheid in this country? Notice how the poet creates the feeling of being trapped too, with the idea that people shout across the wall. And then the poet uses a comparison in the last three lines. Can you work out what type of figure of speech this is? Look at the dancing moon. It is peace, unsoiled by the murk and dirt of this bucket wall. It is a metaphor. Can you remember what a metaphor is? In a metaphor, the qualities of one thing are directly applied to another. 
piece is compared to the dancing moon. And then the bucket is compared to the war raging between the races in this country at the time. The poet makes the characteristics of war equal to the characteristics of the water in the bucket. The murk and dirt. What do you think Gabriel or Cara's intention was when he wrote this poem? In other words, why did he write it? And what is the message that he wanted to communicate to the readers? Now let's look at the poet's intention. I think that the poet is trying to encourage people to leave behind their hatred and their mistrust and to end the conflict that is raging in their society. Now what about the message? The poet leaves us with a message that the world can be like the moon, pure and without hate. Now let's look at the characteristics that makes this poem protest poetry. The poet has pointed out the conditions in this country at the time in a very symbolic way, as a bucket filled with soiled water. And then he refers to the people behind walls shouting hate, the oppressors. He continues by suggesting that we will eventually have peace with the moon metaphor. This poem certainly protests against the policies of separation and inequality of the apartheid government. Notice how this type of poem has to have a very indirect message because poets and writers were often jailed for criticizing the government. Now let's look at another protest poem. Be Gentle by Njabulo Ndebele. Be gentle on my mind. Please do be gentle, soft. Do not crowd my mind with studied images of my past. Let me feel it first. Do not display my carved rituals at the British Museum, for little do they say. Let me feel them first. It is the fairy tale in me, the storybook. That is the pure tale of my being. Do go gentle on my mind. Softly, please. Soft. Let's talk about what or who is being protested against in this poem. Were you able to work it out from our initial reading? This poet is offended by the tendency of the Western world to study and decide what African culture is and means. This is referred to in the line, studied images of my past. And then he writes that African rituals are used as interesting display items in places like the British Museum. And again he expresses his resentment. Instead, he argues the world should realize his true nature and history and respect that. This we see in these lines. This is really a very sensitively written and sophisticated protest. If you read the poem carefully and consider the images that the writer has used, you should be able to form an opinion as to what his intention and message is. He wants African culture to be respected and not violated by being treated as an oddity in a museum. He also highlights that African culture should be decided by African people and not be imposed on them. Now let's look at a final poem. On the surface, this poem might seem like fun, but see if you can identify the underlying message. Devotees of Rugger by Lenry Peter. Devotees of Rugger claim it's a whole slice better than soccer. Better than soccer a class apart. In this poem, he's trying to describe how some people think rugby or rugger is better than soccer. But is he really talking about sport? Or are rugby and soccer symbolic of something else? The poem continues with the poet writing about many other sports. And then he ends the poem with these lines. There's always a ball to bear the brunt symbolic ruin of our world. So what was his intention and message? 
The poet is clearly referring to the competition between soccer and rugby in this country. But he also alludes to the racial conflict, since at the time, soccer was seen as a traditionally black person sport and rugby as a white person sport. What is symbolic in this poem? He writes that a ball takes the blame for the racial problems that existed in the apartheid society at large. This poem protests against racism and it suggests that society is so petty that they don't address their problems directly but instead blame things like a specific taste in sport to explain the divisions that exist in our country. The message Peter leaves us with is that we should try to not blame our bad behavior on things that are irrelevant to the problem. Now you will encounter other examples of protest poetry as you study poetry at school. Always try to determine the poet's intention and message. Join me again next time. Bye-bye.